What is going on everyone? Day 2 of March Madness is in the books. Overall, I would say it was a little more entertaining than yesterday. You see more upsets, if you will. You see these 16, 15, 14 seeds putting up more of a fight than you did yesterday. So let's dissect this one. How about two? Two 12-5 upsets, and statistically over the years, that is always the biggest upset. Yesterday, we saw John Moran, Murray State, take down Marquette for the first one, and today, there are two on the menu. Liberty ends up just taking down Mississippi State, and Mississippi State, going into this game, I, I thought they were very vulnerable. They were definitely a squad that can lose. A five seed from Mississippi State, I never really saw that anyway. They have Holmesley, one of their top dogs, and I'm speaking about... Liberty knocking 22 of his 30 points in the second half. They would not stop fighting. They ended up getting the job done late. They were knocking down shots. They were persistent and they finished the job off. Also, 12. Oregon takes down number 5 Wisco. I'll be honest, I don't believe in Pac-12 basketball. They're really not good. You see Arizona State get destroyed today by Buffalo. I was surprised that Washington was able to get the job done over Utah State like they did. I just don't trust Pac-12 basketball. And they get the job done over a, a, a tough Wisco team at that 12-5 matchup, man, there's something about that, whether it's mentally or what, or just the way the teams always match up. The 12-5 is literally insane statistically every single year. Three of the four 12s advance, it's really crazy. But the biggest upset of the day was UC Irvine. This was one where most people talked about it way before it happened, and so many people were discussing the upset. I thought there's no way in hell. I know K-State has some injury problems and all that, but Kansas State has been a really good team all year, and for the back-to-back -back threes to occur for UC Irvine late in the win, 70-64, to it was unreal to see. I love upsets. I really do. It kind of takes away from, not, not so much takes away from, because Cinderella's is something that obviously people connect with as fans of March Madness, and that's a beauty part of March Madness, but later down as the tournament goes, obviously it's a lot nicer to see tougher matchups, but I, I love Cinderella's, don't get me wrong, I'm not mad that UC Irvine wins, I love seeing this stuff, and speaking of it, you had the ones, the ones today, whether it was Virginia, whether it was Duke, whether it was UNC, they were getting pressured early first half by the squads that they were uh, playing against. UNC, Iona, in the first half, Iona was knocking down these three-pointers all half long. It was unbelievable. It, it was clear that they weren't going to be able to keep something like that up. But after what we saw with Virginia last year, you really never know. Now, Virginia mentally early in this game was struggling big time as well. Since they had everything happen to them that they did last year, it seemed a little more possible. But that second half was something else as they ended up playing Gardner-Webb. But it was a ridiculous first half, and Virginia was definitely nervous until they found their way. And same with Duke. Duke ended up going up against North Dakota State. Carson Wentz in the building. Actually, I have no idea. But it was another game where that 16 seed was just playing really well. And, of course, then Zion goes off. R.J. Barrett does his thing. In the second half, everything just completely changes. There's just so much you could possibly do. And that's why you really never see the 16-1 upset except for the first time last year. But it's getting closer, it seems. These teams are really putting up a fight. So all three number ones today had some sort of battle. Earlier in the day to start the tip-off, tip-off, off, tip off, off you ended up having Cincinnati blow one. They were up. Uh, Iowa ends up pulling together a run in that second half to really just secure the game and, and steal one from Cincinnati. Typical Cincinnati. For them to get a seed like that, I thought, was a little high for them, too. They end up with the seven seed. What makes Cincinnati so good? What have they ever done to really prove to you they were able to get it done? Virginia Tech, by the way, they were crushing St. Louis early in the basketball game. St. Louis found their game just a little too late, and Virginia Tech ends up getting a, a much-needed win, bringing back their best player from injury. And, and I like that squad. I have them actually beating Duke. I don't know if it's ever really going to get to that level, but I, I really do like Virginia Tech's squad. They have what it takes to, to really make some noise, I think. I really do. They just have to play like they did in the first half today. 
Some other games that I was surprised with, Oklahoma scored 92 on Ole Miss. I've watched Oklahoma play in the Big 12 this year multiple, multiple times. Never thrilled with their style of play. For them to score 92, now I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and say Ole Miss is a phenomenal basketball team either, but I was just stunned to see 92 points put up. I've seen that Oklahoma squad play. All right, This isn't the Trey Young squad, so I was a little stunned to see that. In, in regards to some teams that just totally ended up getting their win and moving on to the next round with some sort of ease. Houston, Buffalo, Washington, Texas Tech, UCF. There was a late surge from who was playing UCF. Why am I uh, thinking? Oh, VCU. It was VCU. Uh, they made some sort of a little late push, but UCF made way too much noise early in that basketball game. They just took care of business. Ohio State won. They stink. They beat Iowa State. They also stink. It was 62-59, to and Iowa State had a shot at the buzzer to tie the ball game up. And Ohio State, who I thought should have never even been in the tournament, wins a game. And that's why when I bet, I think to myself, well, maybe I should pick Ohio State, because when I think they shouldn't win, they end up do winning. So I always have to bet against my gut. That's just how it works for me sometimes. It's ridiculous. So in regards to what we have coming up on, this would be the Sunday matchup games. Some pretty nice, intense matchups in my opinion. Iowa takes on Tennessee. And this Tennessee team, they can lose. I really do think they can lose. Colgate had them to the wire today and had the lead late. Colgate, 15. Colgate had it late. So I'm just saying, uh, the, this Tennessee team I've seen fold sometimes under the pressure. So we'll see how that all plays up against Iowa. And I don't think Iowa is a very talented team, but yeah, this is why it's Mars. This is why it's crazy. I don't think half these teams are as talented as they are. They end up beating other squads. Washington plays UNC. UCF takes on number one Duke. Buffalo plays Texas Tech. Watch out for this Buffalo team. The speed they play at, the way they, they shoot the basketball, they are a fun team and they're good. They are a really solid team and they're taking on Texas Tech. Oklahoma plays number one Virginia. I don't know what to think of Virginia. Virginia anymore. Every th every game I see, it just it's something different. The pace they play at is so boring, so slow. Obviously, they have a lot of good defenders and they play great team D. Just so boring to watch. I just don't know how successful it's going to be in the tournament. Ohio State takes on Houston. UC Irvine versus Oregon. How about a 13-12 matchup? And Liberty takes on Virginia Tech. All around this game, or this day, had more entertaining games. There were obviously some more upsets involved, but not just that. These one seeds that yesterday maybe were taking it to them and beating down on them, they were down at halftime. Now the second halves were totally different monsters, and they stepped up big time. But, you know, just the fact that it was to that level, there was a little more, oh, what if, what if, involved. And just overall, I feel better quality games. So in the comment section... Let me know what you thought about today overall in comparison to yesterday. What your favorite W was, your favorite upset. How do you feel about these five twelve matchups? What do you just see moving forward with the tournament? You have the Virginia coach kind of escaping another potential biggest heartbreak ever. I'm telling you, when it came to that one, I knew Duke was going to pull through. I figured UNC was going to pull through, although I Iona was playing like... UMBC was last year. When I was watching that game, the biggest thing for me was saying, wow, if Iona can keep that up, they have a chance. But when Virginia was down, when Virginia was down to Gardner-Webb, there was this sense, just because of what happened last year, just because you know the mental aspect of it, just because you know that this team has been through the biggest heartbreak last year, maybe they were clinching a little bit and just getting a little bit tight on the ball, maybe that there was a way. I was really surprised with their second half. I know they had a different mentality understanding what has happened in the past, so I, I figured it wouldn't happen, but just a little bit of me thought it was possible just because of the mental aspect of this thing. But Virginia does pull through, and we, we move on to the next round. Crazy how fast the first two days go. Nothing is like it. Even when we move on to Saturday and Sunday, you have better matchups, but then you have a 12-15 start, a 2-30 start, a 4 start, a, you know, a 6-50 start, an 8-50 start. In comparison to 
the first two days, you're rocking and rolling with three games from 12 to 1.30. And then you got three games from 2.30 to 4. You might have that little awkward break in between games. Bang, at 6.15. The next window starts. You get to 7 to 9s. That's the way it, it's it's the best with. But you do get better matchups. You get better quality basketball as you move into the second round. So I just I really am excited to see some of these matchups play out for the round of 32. It's been very entertaining. No legitimate buzzer beaters yet, but some very solid play, I think, out of these these higher seeds, if you will. When I say higher, I'm talking 13, 14, 15, 16, 12. You're getting better play. Now, does that mean maybe the seedings are wrong? I'm, uh, you know, maybe is it to that extent that the seedings aren't as great as they possibly should be? Or is it just because maybe uh, people seen what happened last year and there's a different mentality with the 16, 15, 14 squads? In, in regards to the 12-5, that's just the craziest to me. Why is it? What is is the reasoning why the 12-5 matchup is what it is every year. Uh, it's just wild. Let me know your thoughts down below. Thanks for watching. See you next time.